Hello and welcome to part 7, the final part of lecture 2 of Bluff Body Aerodynamics. So, now that we've done a little bit of an introduction to boundary layers, the last thing I want to talk about today is some drag results for some very simple bodies to give us some insight into the general behavior of uh, Bluff Body Aerodynamics. So we'll look at some simple shapes. We'll look at a plate and a cross flow, a sphere and a streamlined body. Um, and we'll get some general trends and insights, uh, general trends and physical reasons uh, for the behavior that we see. So let's first sort of consider the very simplest bluff body, which would be a circular plate in a cross flow. So it's a, basically a thin circular plate that is um, normal to the incoming flow. Here the drag is dominated by the effects of flow separation and the drag coefficient is thus not really dependent on Reynolds number except for at very low values of Reynolds number. Once we hit a Reynolds number of a few hundred, which is still very low, um, the drag coefficient becomes completely constant at 1.11. And the reason is that the separation points are defined by the geometry, not by the pressure gradients because there's these sharp edges and the flow is pretty much always going to separate there. This is a universal characteristic of something that we find in um, bluff body aerodynamics. When the separation points are defined by the sharp edges in the geometry rather than by the flow not being able to navigate smooth curves, um, this tends to result in Reynolds number independent behavior. We can look at rectangular plates with various aspect ratios um, with sides A and B length to get drag coefficients and look at the impact that this has. Um, if the aspect ratio is 1, we get pretty much similar to the circular flat, uh, flat plate with a drag coefficient 1.1. And then as we increase the aspect ratio, the drag coefficient goes up. As it tends to sort of a very, very large aspect ratio, the drag coefficient tends to about 2. And this is about as high as a drag coefficient can ever get. Why does this happen? Well, if you think about it, it makes sense because um, in the one and a, and a phenomenon that we haven't really discussed, but that um, is fairly intu intuitive, is called 3D relief. And basically, it says that well, if the flow has sort of more more than one dimension in which to get around an object, that's going to tend to result in um, smaller increases in surface velo in, in the velocity uh, near the surface outside the boundary layers and that tends to decrease drag. As the um, aspect ratio of a flat plate gets higher, um, there's a larger region where the flow is really two-dimensional instead of three-dimensional, and that tends to increase the drag coefficient. We can also look at the drag coefficient over a sphere. This is kind of the most classical example of blunt, body, uh, bluff, blunt or bluff body aerodynamics. Um, the drag coefficient strongly depends on Reynolds number since the separation point moves around depending on Reynolds number. What do you think is happening to cause the sudden drop in drag coefficient just after three times Reynolds number of uh, 300,000? Think about this for a second. We've got a smoothly decreasing drag coefficient, then nearly constant, and then a sudden drop before it starts to rise again. What's happening is that above a critical Reynolds number, the flow transitions to turbulent. Basically, when we see that drop in drag coefficient, the flow is transitioning to turbulence before a laminar separation can occur. And that means there's an increased resistance to adverse pressure gradient. So the separation uh, locations on the cylinder suddenly move backward um, as it, for a small change in Reynolds number. And that smaller separation means a decreased drag coefficient. We can see that here. So here, um, the horizontal axis is the angular location around the sphere. Um, so 0 is at the front, 180 degrees is at the back. Um, curve 1 is the uh, ideal inviscid flow pressure distribution, which is symmetric and therefore would yield 0 drag. Uh, point 2 is a, a, a case before the critical Reynolds number with a laminar separation where um, pretty much from 90 degrees, so basically the top and bottom of the cylinder, the flow separates, and so we have a constant um, pressure coefficient after that. And then point, uh, curve 3 is in the turbulent regime, 
where um, the flow can get all the way up to about 130, 140 degrees around before it separates. So we can see that we're getting a lot closer to that ideal pressure distribution with the flow transitioning to turbulence before it separates and it therefore re it follows, stands to reason that this is going to reduce the drag. Now a streamlined body has min is one that has minimal separation. Um, and so the pressure distribution is going to match the potential flow result almost over almost the whole surface. So this tells, sort of tells us the flow is well attached. Um, that's going to yield a very low drag coefficient. We can see that here. Um, the uh, dots are measured pressure distribution and the dashed line is the theoretical one from potential flow. And we can see that they're almost perfectly matched up. And the reason that this happens is because we've got a very gradual deceleration of the flow since the back part of the body is stretched out and that uh, tends to keep the flow attached because the adverse pressure gradients will not be strong. This is a really nice visual comparison to underscore the differences in drag between bluff and uh, streamlined bodies. So at some high enough Reynolds number, these two shapes, which are shown to scale, have exactly the same drag force acting on them. Uh, so we've got this large uh, streamlined body with uh, width D and a little tiny cylinder with width 0.06 d, so 6%, um, and this and this have the same drag on them. So this really shows the impact the streamlining can have on drag. So the very last thing that we, wish we were going to talk about today is the drag of multi-body systems, and this introduces the idea of interference drag. So interference drag is the additional or sometimes reduced drag that's associated with the proximity of multiple bodies to one another in a flow. So when the bodies are close enough together that the pressure fields around them affect one another, that's when we have effects of interference drag. We'll consider three situations. Two streamlined bodies side by side, two streamlined bodies in a row, and two bluff bodies in a row. Before we get to the specific situations, let's sort of formally define what we mean by interference drag in our automotive context. Um, so this is a delta drag um, and it's basically the drag of the uh, two bodies together minus the sum of their individual drags. So it's the sort of difference in drag. And you can see that conceptually this delta D could be either positive or negative. Um, places where this arises in our automotive aerodynamics are due to the presence of the ground proximity to the car. Um, in on-road traffic, when vehicles overtake one another or are doing multi-lane driving and driving in convoys or vehicles that are closely following one another. If we look at side-by-side uh, -side bodies, this really mimics the effect of either of ground effect or of overtaking, depending on whether we think of the side-by-side -side as being uh, sort of left-right or up-down. Um, right, we really, earlier in the first lecture, we treated the effect of the ground by mirroring a body about a ground plane and a potential flow. And so if we think of bodies next to each other that are separated by two times the ground body distance, this is an excellent model for the effect that this has on drag as well. And so we can study the drag effects that way. So here's our side-by-side -side bodies separated by some distance y. So the ground uh, distance would be y over 2. And this interference drag is always positive. Um, so basically, as y over d, um, use the width of the body um, increases eventually when it gets large enough there's no uh, essentially there's no influence um, but uh, as the proximity increases the uh, drag coefficient rises uh, right so this isn't going to zero because this is the sum of the drag on the two things when they're far apart um, so this is the total drag and you see it rises as they get closer to one another um, and the reason is that this proximity of the two objects to one another increases the maximum velocity at the thickest points on the sides facing each other, so in here. That means there's a lower pressure there and therefore a stronger adverse pressure gradient on the back half, um, and that means that the separation regions will be larger. So next let's consider the case of two streamlined bodies in a row. Um, what's really interesting here is that the uh, Oh, sorry, I'm just realizing this is the drag for one of the body, either of the bodies, one or two, not both together. 
for the streamlined bodies in a row, um, we can look at the drag of the two bodies and the interference drag here tends to be just about zero. So the front body drag goes down as they approach one another and it eventually actually becomes negative. Um, and this is because we have high pressure at the rear due to the proximity of the stagnation point for the back body. And this reduces the adverse pressure gradients over the surface of the first body. And eventually when they're really close together it can actually cause uh, negative drag, which basically means that the front body is being pushed along by the rear one. The back body drag goes up as they get closer together because there's a lower sort of intake pressure. Um, so there's an even stronger adverse pressure gradient as the pressure has to recover to the back. But if I look at these two effects, they just about cancel out and the net sort of, if I thought of these two together, the net uh, impact is that the interference drag is very close to zero regardless of the separation distance. When I've got two bluff bodies in a row, the behavior is a little bit more complicated. First, let's consider two circular disks in a row. Here, the interference drag is negative. The front disk is essentially unaffected by the proximity of the second one, um, since all of the drag there is due to separated flow, which just doesn't change depending on how close the second one is. So we see that the separation distance here, no impact on the drag of body one. Body 2, on the other hand, sees reduced drag due to reduced incoming velocity because we were in the sort of separated wake region behind body 1. And the drag of body 2 can even become negative where it gets pulled along by the front body without increasing the drag of the front one. We can also look at two cylinders in a row. And this also shows negative interference drag, right? So the front cylinder has laminar boundary layers prior to separation, but the proximity of the second body again raises the back pressure similarly to two streamlined bodies in a row. Um, and this reduces the size of the separation and therefore the drag on body one. So we see that the drag goes down as they get close together. And then the turbulent weight from the first body means that the second body has turbulent boundary layers right away which tends to increase its resistance to separation and reduce its drag too. There is sort of a transition um, around two uh, characteristic lengths uh, apart where the drag starts to rise again, um, but still there's overall a, net, a negative interference drag. So to summarize, let's go back to our key messages. For incompressible flow, the force coefficients depend purely on Reynolds number. Integral momentum enables us to calculate the net forces on objects without having to integrate the surface pressure and shear stress distributions on them. And pressure drag is caused by flow separation, which in turn is caused by adverse pressure gradients. And this explains the drag behavior of a variety of individual and multiple body systems. And that's the end of lecture two.